again, that sound of you as if we're going from the ESP block, but I'm over the ribs. I'm now going to go towards the midline. As I go towards the midline, you can see the ribs coming down. Bam. So we're right, we're right now here over the transverse processes. Um, but I want to see the superior costotransverse ligament. So I'm going to tilt my probe slightly laterally. I've got the probe in a para parasagittal orientation. Uh, I've scanned from lateral towards medial. I've got to the transverse processes, and I'm tilting the beam laterally. When I tilt the beam laterally, see, I see a beautiful view of the pleura. But because I'm directing the beam laterally, I'm now looking at the lateral bone. So I'm now looking at the rib. So I need to drag my probe a bit more medially. So now I've got a view here of and paraspinal muscles, the transverse process, uh, and if I go, if I rock from lateral to medial, you can see I've got rib transverse process. So that's still not a great view, isn't it? If you wanted a view, if you want to kneel down there, you can't see perfectly what you do. So I'm going to introduce a little bit of chordad laterality. Now, what that process has done, if you have a look now, I've now got an image on the screen where I've got a transverse process on the left-hand side. Uh, I'm actually scanning on the right-hand side over a rib. And that's immediately reduced that bony impedance that I've got to get down into the paravertebral space. So right over here, skin, subcutaneous tissue, you've got adipose, you've got your paraspinal muscles, you've got a transverse process right here. You've got a rib over here, because I've introduced that chordal laterality, so I'm sort of paraspinal, oh, sort of parasagittal oblique. We've got a nice view of the pleura down here. And then going from the rib below to the transverse process above, you're starting to get this impression over here, which is the superior costotransverse ligament. So when I first started teaching paravertebrals and I was taught them by John McDonnell, what we were saying to everyone was, you have to be deep to the superior costotransverse ligament in order to have a successful paravertebral block. That was the teaching. Um, and it's quite a satisfying feeling when you go through that. You feel a pop. You know you're there. You inject local anesthetic, and you see that pleura drop down at multiple levels. And the beauty of having the parasagittal uh, orientation is you can scan up and down or uh, careful having cord out in real time, and you can assess how many levels of, of, um, of blockade you've achieved. Um, but what we noticed was actually, you don't always need to be deep to the costotransverse ligament. And this is what puts people off about paravertebral block is when you do bring your needle tip about here, people understandably get a little bit nervous for, of, of doing that. So that's the reason why I use a Huber, uh, I use a, tu a Tui needle. So I've got the point placed like that. So you can actually, if you needed to, rest the, the tip of the needle over here and you're not gonna pierce the pleura. Um, but if you, so if you're aiming to do a paravertebral, I bring my needle in plane. I'm a big fan of in plane techniques. Approach the costotransverse ligament, pop through it. You, sometimes a patient can feel the pop. You can hear the pop. It's like a cannulation feeling. You know, when you get into the vessel, you know you're there. You get a little sensation with that. You inject your local anesthetic, and I use a, a test dose of local anesthetic. You see the pleura drop down, and then I switch my syringe, my syringe from a lidocaine or adrenaline containing lidocaine solution uh, to my volume of local anesthetic. And I'm a practitioner where I do a single level. So I do a single level of 20 mils of local anesthetic. And in real time, when you assess that spread, you get about three to five, sometimes six levels um, of paravertebral spread. But what we noticed, and this is why these paravertebral by, by proxy techniques may have a role, is actually sometimes you can be above the costotransverse ligament at the MTP point. So Iwana, uh, Kostash, and colleagues described this technique. So you have your local anesthetic there. You're clearly way away from the pleura, which makes it a safe technique. You inject local anesthetic, and the pleura drops. So we've traditionally thought that the costotransverse ligament was an impenetrable barrier, but that's not the case. There's certainly uh, some permutations there. There, there. There's some holes in there, and it's not a solid sheet, so it doesn't it doesn't cause complete obstruction. So if you did a multi-level injection at the MTP level, you may well uh, get some paravertebral spread, and there's some cadaveric studies to support that. What's interesting is Michael Barrington has recently published a paper over here where he's looked at his cadaveric investigations, and they're in cadavers. They're not real life, uh, but he's injected local anesthetic in the ESP plane. And we were hoping that this was going to show really lovely spread deep to the costotransverse ligament. But actually, what he showed is the local anesthetic has gone up and down in the ESP plane, but got the, the, the lateral branch and the dorsal rami of the intercostal nerves, but didn't stain the paravertebral space. So this is still something we need to investigate. 